Cowherd. Is this Villanova team an all-time great? Uh, no, they're an all-time good in a very watered-down sport. When I watched that last night, we all kind of knew that Villanova had better players, right? And they'd be blowing people out. But Michigan really told you the story of college basketball. Michigan, in five of their six games, shot under 45%. In 2018, can't hit threes, has a marginal NBA prospect, and got here. Michigan in 1985 does not get to the Final Four. Um, Villanova's really good. They're ahead of the sport on the three. Um, and they've really become as good a college basketball program as we have. I mean, I, I think right now they're every bit Duke, maybe not on the recruiting trail, but outside of that, they're, they're Duke, and I think better than Kentucky. But, man, Michigan doesn't get to that game in the 70s and 80s, Jason. I, I agree, but I, I'm going to redefine the discussion just a little bit. They are great for this era we've just moved uh, into. Nah, okay. And so when I go back and look at some of the great Duke teams, Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurd, Grant Hill on the same team, UNLV teams, even the Fab Five that never won a championship, this, it, these guys aren't that. But for this era and what we're going to consider great moving forward, I don't know if you can be any better than what they were. They have a group of veteran players who play really unselfishly, uh, who have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not big on Brunson as a pro, but he'll have a cup of coffee in the pros. Bridges will play in the pros. I think the Dante kid probably may be the best pro prospect, but again, to have that much talent spread out and that much experience. In 2018. That's as great as you can be. Greatness is, the, is defined by um, consistency, and they've been consistent over the past couple of years, and I think they've set the tone for a dominant basketball program. As I said before, they're the new Duke of the 90s when Duke was, was emerging. They had some talent, they had some pros, and they set the tone, and they built a program over the past 20, 25 years. So I think Jay Wright is doing a great job of, of creating a program and, and developing pros and developing guys who are going to be pros for long periods of time over there at Villanova. I think they have three pros on that team right now. Right. But, but just think about it. If you got a team that has won a championship, national championship over the last three years, you have to be validated as one of the all-time greats. You look at what Coach K did in 91 and 92 when they won back-to-back -back years. But now, because you do that, you change the whole tempo. Me and Dante was talking about this earlier. They are the new Duke, right? Duke usually gets the top recruits all the time. But now these second-tier guys are finding out how to play. And when you keep them there in their system, it builds more chemistry. That's why Jay Wright's team is thriving. I, the, there is one thing that's interesting that – Five years ago, college basketball was trying to tell me that experience didn't matter. Just get the best players. When I watched them last night, you know, th these were grown-ups. Like, it was an interesting team where they kind of got lucky with a couple of recruits. One gets hurt. Like, these, not only did they have NBA length, not only did they pass like NBA players, right. but these were 21-year-old guys. And in this world of 18-year-old players, there's a certain maturity right. to that locker right. room. It's like... It felt like old college basketball where you didn't have to call a timeout every time there was duress. It, it felt to me like I grew up in Indianapolis, grew up in Indiana, following Bobby Knight's basketball program. The 76 Indiana Hoosier team that beat everybody, last team to go undefeated. This team looked like that to me. They, they have a system and a belief system that, that they stick to, very unselfish. Nobody really so much better than anybody else on the team. And that's why I would throw this curveball, and it's interesting, particularly with Corey and Dante here, is that I wish these guys would come back for another year. I wish they would do what Floor... If they really wanted to stamp themselves as great, we saw Noah... Uh, Corey Brewer and Al Horford do it in Florida, come back and defend their title. It didn't hurt their pro career. Why, why not come back and, and establish yourself as me, an all-time great Let me ask you this. Team? We think all these other teams are great, right? Okay. But if you look at a lot of those Duke players and Kentucky players, they weren't dominating pros many... I mean, Christian Leitner was better than people think he was, but he wasn't a dominant pro. Grant. Curley had the accident. Grant got hurt a lot. But, but he, he was, was dominant. dominant when he, he was still one of the greatest players yeah, of Brunson all time. Brunson makes it. Dante makes it. Um, Bridges, Bridges makes it. And the other kid, is it Spellman? 
Yes. That's four pros. Brunson's that... going to be great in the YMCA. I'm not sure. <laughs> Brunson's going to be, he's going to be a cerebral point guard in I this agree. game where you need to be able to shoot. Lithuania. And he, and he has a, he has a, he has the ability uh. to post up right now, which creates different <laughs> dynamics with, with pick and pop fives. Oh, okay. So oh. he, he'll be able to do that in NBA. Whitlock, do you think Jay Wright and Villanova has made, say, Coach K rethink his one and done approach? He should. And, and <laughs> I, he really should. I, I don't like his answer there in terms of the world change. You don't have to go the way of the world. The way of the world's everybody jumping off a building, everybody's stupid. Jay Wright saw an opportunity. He's like, oh, Coach K is going to come off his game and follow John Calipari. That created an opportunity for Jay Wright and hopefully some other teams to go a different direction. I, I think he shouldn't again. You you're gonna Duke's always going to get top talent. But you don't have to have four of the top 11 guys in order to win a championship, I think they'd be better off with some more experienced players surrounding a Bagley and another great. I, I don't. I, I'm very suspicious about whether this thing next year is going to work. When you're, when you, go ahead. When you're in a position where you have guys that dreamt of going, dreamt of going to Duke their whole life, do you tell them no if they're one, two, and three in their class and maybe ten? Like you have kids that have wanted to go to Duke their whole life, and then Coach K's in a position where. You take the best talent, some of them mature, some of them are not. But maturity is the key, like you said before. These, some kids are mature, some kids are not. And the good teams that, that, that work in college basketball, the, the teams that are mature, you can have an 18-year-old as mature as a 21-year-old. It doesn't matter the age, it matters the maturity level and the, the ability to learn at, at a quick pace. So coach is not really going to change his dynamic right now. He's just going to try to put together the best team possible because there are, there are mature teams with the Fab Five. Like they're mature teams that, that, that have existed in college basketball no matter how old the kids were. They were just mature and ready to I win. I covered the Fab well, Five. They weren't mature, but continue. Well, basketball, <laughs> ba mature in a basketball sense. Well, again, again, first of all, we're saying this, but it, it ultimately boils down to if Coach K always has the best talent, so. Coach K always has those guys that is going to go one through five in the lottery. Villanova hasn't had those guys. So they have to stay in order to build their repertoire in order to get to that level. It has nothing to do with Coach K. Coach K understands this. And we we coming from this position because we, we, we played there. Absolutely. Coach K understands. Good coaches understand when things will change. I was the first player in Duke history that left. Did they like it? No. But Coach K knew that the change will happen. It doesn't matter that the way of the world, you have to figure out how to continue to build that program and that university. I, I, well, I thought of Kentucky last night. Calipari's been there nine years, one title. In the footprint of Nick Saban, who wins every year. Con Duke's got all sorts of players next year, and Nova will yes. be good. We don't know if Kentucky will be good next year. I feel Nova's pulling away from Kentucky. I think Villanova's pulling away from everybody, and Jay Wright right now is the man in college basketball, and I know I Coach K is great. But again, Corey, what I'm suggesting, though, is you got four guys coming to Duke at 18, 19 years old who will be thinking about the NBA draft Every day they're on Duke's well, look, campus. I, I, I it really, can't be that way. But I think every kid, when they're in college basketball, they're playing their best to be in the NBA. Right. Every single guy is preparing for that. Villanova that, will have this problem. They're going to have this problem, too. Jay Wright is doing a great job. He has kept these veteran guys, these 21-year-olds, that has a lot of chemistry, cerebral type of players. But again, if this program continues to do that, more recognition comes which leads to more TV time and guys will try to leave early. So what does Jay Wright do? So Jay Wright has been in national championship uh, two of the past three years, won two national championships, and that top-tier talent is looking at Villanova now. now this, so now, so now I, when you have the top, that, you have four of the top 12 kids that want to come. You pick your then, spots. You don't have to take all four. You, you take the best talent available and you just, you, and you make, you make. So make here, the, here's what's interesting. So Villanova's classes, recruiting rankings, have gone like 48, 29, 45, 28, 12. What happens if what happens if it goes to four? I agree with Whitlock. I don't think I think you have to find fits, but I do think it not a dilemma, but I think it will be an interesting moment for Jay when five star guys want to go to Villanova. Sure. But I agree with you that you don't have to take. Corey, would you would you have wanted to play at Duke with three or four other 18 year olds who are all on the court at the same time? 
Would, would, wouldn't you have had a better chance, I'm sure you did, had a better chance of being surrounded by some veteran players who could teach you some things? I just think, again, I'm not saying, again, yeah, everybody dreams about playing at Duke. You don't have to take them all. Hell, I dreamed about playing at Duke. He don't got to take me, you know? <laughs> so When I came to Duke, I was a transfer from Rutgers University, and Coach K sat me in, the, in his office and said, you know what, I have four McDonald's All-Americans coming in. I have McDonald's All-Americans from the past, but all I care about is who competes. Nobody is guaranteed anything in this locker exactly. room. Nobody is guaranteed a, a spot, a play. We've turned away guys who said, I, I need to be a starter. I need the offense to run through me. Okay, we'll let you out of your commitment because it depends on who works the hardest and who's the most consistent. You have a shot just like any other All-American all, all that came, that was a past All-American or a present All-American. You have the same shot. If you work harder than them, you have a spot. And that, so all this All-American, all these people who are touted to be what it is, they fall, some fall off. Some All-Americans fall off and are not pros. It's not, a, it's not a guaranteed equation that if you're All-American, you're going to be a pro and you're going to be successful in college basketball. What that looks at, too, is you look at what the McDonald's All-American. We've seen multiple teams that have five or six McDonald's All-Americans on a team. And if you're a McDonald's All-American, the world thinks that these guys are going to make it to the pros. But again, you, you don't know what's going to happen. From Coach K's perspective, if you go there, you're absolutely right. Oh, I'm, I'm not telling you that you start. You have to be a hard worker. And what Coach K is going to do, he's going to make you a hard worker. He's going to make you a guy that can run through a wall. Ultimately, what the goal is to win a national championship. So today. when they don't win the national championship next year, I'm inviting y'all both back and we'll have this conversation again. They need to adjust their strategy.